Um, thank you for including our paper and thanks for uh, uh, organizing this great uh, program. We are very excited to attend our work, work here. So this is joint work with uh, Xiaoming Zhang and it's, uh, also uh, my uh, PhD classmate and incoming assistant professor at the Chitao University Department of Sociology. And I'm a uh, PhD candidate in FTU. So what we are doing in this paper, we try to uh, use a very unique setting in China's historical bureaucracy to understand a uh, uh, gen uh, more general question on the organizational economics. So let me first start with the motivation of this paper. So uh, we all know that the large literature uh, talking that state capacity is very important for uh, economic development. So uh, bureaucrats who perform state function are the key elements of state capacity. And the, when the unique, uh, and the one unique thing in bureaucracy is that bureaucratic organization will face many constraints in utilize the uh, uh, incentive devices due to the uh, multitasking problem, right? So that makes the, the allocation of talent cri more critical in uh, the public organization. So how, uh, how to allocate bureaucrats? So generally speaking, uh, we have already have two uh, methods. One is by rule and one is by, by the distribution of, of some uh, decision maker. So, uh, there is a very long intellectual tradition uh, study from the uh, famous argument from Max Weber that the ideal bureaucracy should be a uh, dehumanized and a completely rule-based system. So that, that is a very uh, dominant view in the in the in our thinking. So, but uh, the very rigid rules could also generate a talent misallocation and uh, a low performance of the organization for two reasons. Mm -hmm. First, very rigid rule with disregard uh, the considerable heterogeneity in different positions. And the second one is that if you completely rely on a mechanical rule, you will prevent the use of uh, any public or the private information, right? So, well, what they asked the question in this paper is that uh, how this question compared to the rule in the appointment uh, could affect the quality and the performance of bureaucrats. So uh, theoretically, uh, the effect of this question was the rule is, uh, is ambiguous. There are two, uh, the literature shows uh, two opposite effects. On the one hand, the, this question could and uh, makes the decision maker to use the primary public information in bureaucracy in, in the appointment in decision making. Right. So uh, the recent uh, uh, recent paper uh, on our JPE by Watson Xu so that in the uh, British British Navy the 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 Admiralty, which is on the top of the top of the the uh, British Navy, actually use their dissertation to uh, promote a better capable officer. And uh, you know, also, uh, we, we know that uh, this equation naturally opened the door for favoritism and the corruption, right? You, you may use uh, this equation to just uh, appoint someone who has connection with you, and which also uh, leads to poor performance of that. So, uh, despite the long standing rivalry, uh, in favor of limiting this question in a bureaucracy, we do we do not have a uh, very good and direct causal evidence on this issue. I think the main reason is uh, as a lack of variation in appointment uh, method within the organization. Uh, 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 usually, uh, in in a certain position of uh, organization, we usually have uh, a unified appointment method. So you, you don't have a comparison. So let's make it hard to know the counterfactual for for comparison. So uh, what we do in this paper, we study the how this question appointment affects the quality and the bureaucrats and their consequence on the performance of our government. And we study this question in uh, China's imperial bureaucracy system in Qing Dynasty. Uh, 
that's some uh, thing I uh, like to talk about, about uh, China's imperial bureaucracy. So there's a consensus in the uh, political history story that the, the, the ancient China is deemed to be the earliest inventor of the modern scale bureaucracy. And uh, the, the, they, actually, they actually share many prominent, prominent characteristics with the modern, modern bureaucracy, such as the, uh, the competitive uh, civil service exam and uh, a written rule and regulation, regular monitoring, and also the separation of uh, office and office holder. And uh, another unique side team in the team's bureaucracy is that they implement an entirely rule-based process. So I think that could provide a very thin benchmark for us to evaluate the effect of the dissertation against uh, the rule-based one. And uh, we uh, construct a very unique and personal data set and we, which include uh, over 10,000 upon the records of a prefectural governor uh, during the period of uh, 1644 to 1820. And it is almost the entire universe of the prefectural, prefectural government in that period. And we are also linking that data to the other data on the governance outcomes, so the uh, natural disaster, public goods, and the social unrest. And uh, our, ad, our advocation strategy, we will, we will utilize a uh, network experiment in the important method. So uh, basically, in the early period of Qing Dynasty, they, uh, they use a very mechanical rule-based appointment for the uh, prefectural government. It's very different from the practice of today. We use a very yeah, mechanical appointment. So there's no room for uh, uh, anyone to interact. And, uh, and we, our analysis will center on uh, personal reform in uh, 60s, 36. Uh, during that, after that reform, uh, roughly half of the prefecture governorship uh, switched from the uh, Ruby's appointment to a more discretionary appointment process. And let me talk about, about talk more about this reform. So the first thing I want to say is that uh, in the Qin Dynasty, the, all the local jurisdiction, local jurisdiction, they will be rated according to their governance feature. So all the uh, local jurisdiction, they have uh, this kind of important rating ranging from zero to four. I will talk about more about how what determines this uh, rating. But so far, you uh, just understand that this is a uh, uh, assessment of uh, how hard how, or how important of a uh, certain uh, local jurisdiction. So uh, in the early period, as I said, all this uh, prefecture, uh, despite their important reason, they all follow a very mechanical rule-based uh, appointment. And uh, after the reform, for uh, this prefecture with the high importance reason, which uh, really is three or four, they were uh, switched from uh, the rule based one to a uh, discretionary appointment, uh, uh, which the appointer will select uh, within the predetermined the eligible candidate space. For uh, the other prefecture with more important reasons, they remain on the uh, status quo rule. So, this, we think about this is a very naturally uh, different, different setting. So, uh, and what we do is we uh, estimate the uh, different different uh, model, and uh, we also uh, uh, we also use the propensity score matching. We try to have a more comparable treated and controlled prefectures. So we compare the quality and also the performance of these governors in the treated prefecture and those in not treated prefecture before and after reform. So our basic finding is that. Uh, this uh, discretionary appointment relatively to rule improves the quality of the governor. We find that after reform, uh, this, gov this governor appointed the treaty prefecture, they tend to be more experienced. They, they are more likely to, have, to having served as a, uh, as a governor previously. And they are also uh, tend to be more competent. And we, we find that they have, uh, they have a, 
higher fever, fever exam degree. And the, in the next part, we, uh, we uh, examine whether this improvement in quality translates to uh, any real, um, real outcome. And we find that we will focus our analysis on uh, our one public group, which is the disaster relief. And I, I think this is uh, it's arguably the most crucial public good in the uh, agriculture, in the traditional channel, which is the uh, agriculture economy. And we find the, the treaty to factor after the reform, they receive, they have more public goods provision. And uh, they also have a have greater uh, government responsiveness to the occurrence of natural disaster. We also find, find that they experience less social unrest. And in the last part, if I can, I will uh, talk about more about the, our heterogeneous analysis on uh, when the disinfection is beneficial. So we uh, we argue that whether this situation is beneficial depends on uh, whether the decision maker the incentive is aligned with the organization. Okay, so let me uh, let me talk about the uh, institutional background. So uh, so the local government in the Xin Dynasty. Uh, it's uh, roughly similar to the nowadays China. So the hierarchy, the three hierarchy province, prefecture, and county, which is very similar to today. And uh, our analysis focused on the prefectural level governor, which is who the, was the defensive authority in matters of administration and the uh, jurisdiction matters. And uh, let me talk about this one. Uh, and I want to talk about more about the uh, personal regulation in China, which is uh, largely different from today. The first thing I want to say that uh, in China, which is, this is a very centralized quantum system. It's a, so we know that in uh, Northeast China, the uh, bureaucrats appointment is a, a one level down, right? So the national government appoint the provincial officials, provincial officials appoint the Prefectural right? So, but in the Qin Dynasty, uh, all the middle and the junior officials who was lower than the provincial level, they, uh, they were all appointed by the central government. Actually, they were uh, the appointment process is uh, administered by the Ministry of uh, Personnel, like uh, the organization department of CCP today. So that's the first thing. A second thing is that the uh, Qin bureaucracy, they implement uh, a rule-based qualification regulation and a career track. So uh, specifically, uh, each position will have a very specific qualification requirement. And they also have a corresponding career track story according to uh, the regulation. What does that mean that, uh, take the example of uh, prefecture governor, who can be promoted as a prefecture governor? We are very specific regulations. You have to be a county magistrate, the new secretary of censorate, or the vice director of, of the uh, central ministry, or the best prefecture governor. So, uh, this, uh, so, and another thing that, as I said, in the early period, all the uh, uh, a lower and middle position was uh, were appointments but for the appointments follow a mechanical rule based system. So uh, what is that? Uh, uh, basically, uh, this is a kind of a combination of uh, a seniority based appointment and a random allocation. So a uh, bureaucrat with certain uh, corresponding qualification according to uh, regulation, they will be added to the candidate list and they will bring up for vacancies based on their similarity. So once they were uh, at the top of the candidate list, they will, they will be assigned to uh, a new position by a random lottery. So uh, that's the benchmark we want to estimate. So uh, here's just uh, some figures. I screenshot from the TV series division of who is a uh, very famous official uh, in the early 1960s. 
And in that series, there's a episode to the mission of who is a, a few a young bureaucrats join this uh, lottery process. And they, 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 they just draw a lot from this. And this has is the, uh, the Wharton County in for people. So that's how that basically how that works. So, and our, the, the natural experiment of this uh, quantum method, as I said, in the, uh, in the 6, 17, 36, after that, all the prefecture governorship with the importance rating uh, equal or higher to three would be appointed to the appointment by as the discretion of the emperor. So uh, near, it's nearly half of the prefectures. And uh, another thing we need to emphasize that that the discretion is also within the predetermined qualification regulation. So so also. Uh, so, so though this is a, a discretion process, the discretion is limited. You cannot uh, appoint uh, anyone you like. So let me talk about what is this important reading. So basically, they, uh, it's an assessment of a governance features of a local jurisdiction. And we use that have uh, four dimensions. One is the importance of tra transportation. The second one is uh, whether this locality is uh, onerous to uh, onerous have uh, onerous administrative burden. The second and the third one is whether that location, uh, the government is very is much challenging in collecting uh, taxation. And uh, the last one is about the prevalence of a crime and the violence. So that's the I think that's the four uh, important. Uh, governance features, the governance here in the uh, traditional China. So you can think of this as uh, this is a four dummy variable. So, so the important rating is just the, the form of uh, these four dummy variables. So this is, so that could be an index ranging from zero to uh, four. Okay, so any question about this uh, uh, institutional background? Sorry, my last one. So, yeah. to the because uh, the Qing uh, Emperor is a Manchurian, so the and, and we know that for the imperial exam, they also separate an exam for Manchurian and the Han. So I wonder, within this uh, personnel system, is there a, a, a favorism towards the Manchurian? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great point. Yeah. So based on my understanding, there are in the central government, there are, there are many uh, positions. Which is uh, uh, excluded from the uh, the hands the hands and the hands uh, people. So in the in most of the junior and the middle position, they don't they don't have the very uh, specific regulation on the on the as necessary. So uh, the hand people and the Manchuri or the Mongolian people they enter this uh, allocation process uh, easily. See, thanks. Yeah, okay. So uh, let me talk about the data recap. We, we construct a, a unique a personal data. Uh, we, we, we basically, we mainly use the source from a, a variety of historical local data. Yes, let me show you how the, uh, the it's a sample of this. So, so we have the name of the governor, their hometown, the degree in several degrees and the uh, the year of our project. But so so that's uh, we what kind of data we collect. So we, we will have uh, the detailed uh, person personal information of this job. And we also cross check from the different sources to store up a different quality. We also have, we also have the other uh, people also data senior officials so we can check the check their Career to uh, define whether they were promotion promoted, and we also pack the uh, the uh, government's uh, punishments data whether you you in this scenario a certain governor is uh, was a uh, punishment, 
and uh, uh, speak of this uh, governance outcome, uh, we collect we can have uh, a rich data on the uh, disaster relief and the tax exemption from uh, trans collection. We also collect social unrest from uh, Wu uh, historical studies. And uh, we also collect uh, a very rich uh, natural disaster data. So we, want, we want to study whether the government uh, responds to the uh, natural disaster. Yeah, so that's that's uh, uh, that's the pre-reform uh, descriptive statistics of this structure. Uh, so during that period, before the reform, uh, it's a uh, uh, less than a uh, thirty percentage of this uh, governor is uh, has the degree of the you know, which is the highest degree in the country system, and uh, and the the most part of them is uh, has, is the hand as it. And uh, for the Manchuri band, we found in the data there's very little, actually very little Manchuri people uh, serving as uh, prefecture governors. Okay, so so let me uh, enter the uh, empirical strategy. So so uh, we will utilize this uh, reform in a different different session. So we will compare the quality of governor of Appointment by the discretion compared to this uh, appointment by the statutory rule before and after uh, so to speak. So we will first uh, estimate whether this reform improved the quality. So we will have uh, two main measures. The first is the experience. So we uh, we code whether uh, uh, a governor having served as a, as a governor previously. Another is competence. Which is also the dummy variable that for one, if uh, we have the uh, receiver's exam degree higher or higher. But so that we have a standard uh, two V bit track. So the education assumption, so since there's a standard difference here, so the uh, the assumption, identified assumption is a common trend assumption. So the outcome in treated and control. We should have, uh, we would have involved similarly in the test of the reform. So we will, uh, we will test this in the uh, even, even study uh, certification. Here, uh, we want also uh, have some supporting evidence. Of that. Uh, first, is that in the benchmark, this, in the, the allocation is a combination of scenarios and the random one. So because the final allocation is random, so it is uh, uh, natural to see that the treatment and control they are similar. So we we also have tried to uh, accept that we, we here we have these two plots. We uh, plot the distribution of, of, of distribution of common experience and uh, the civil service rank before the report for the treatment and control rule. We and we find that this distribution is uh, nearly identical. So we think this is the really natural from a uh, random process. And we also uh, do some uh, more detailed regression settings to check whether uh, whether the random is not formed uh, is this. And we also uh, found that the, the treated and control prefecture, they are not, uh, they not you know, they're not, uh, uh, Random allocated, right? So we want to think about what determines the, the treatment. We know that the, the, the treatment treated prefecture they have a higher importability, and the, we identify six variables to try to capture that. So we find that after we a control for this uh, treatment criteria, we find that there's a conditional. We find the treated and control prefecture, they are uh, conditional bias on other uh, prefecture characteristics. And we also uh, use this uh, six, six. We also use this uh, six treatment criteria to, uh, uh, to have uh, to do a 
uh, propensity score matching to have a more comparable GD and the control prefecture. Okay, so I, I do have a question here. Yeah. Because I think the most uh, important difference between this uh, treatment control lies in the importance ranking, right? Yeah, yeah. So if that is different, even you have some balance in other characteristics, I think the, the you cannot you still cannot say that well that is uh, these two groups are comparable because the the, the importance ranking is, is di different different and you cannot you cannot match using that variable right because uh, it is not possible to find a uh, to find yeah, a, a, a area similar with in this uh, in this variable so so even you you have some similar characteristic in other dimensions but the most important one is not balanced then how can you say that this is, these two groups can be compared yeah, I think we, 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 if we, uh, we, if we can identify this, uh, uh, this treatment criteria, if this, uh, largely capture the variation in the importance ranking, right? So in the, in the matched, matched, in the matched, uh, temple, we find that this treatment criteria, they are also, uh, do have a very significant uh, differences, but yeah, yeah, I, I understand that, that this is that the treatment and uh, uh, control group is, they are not ideally very very comparable. There, yes, I think this is also the same problem uh, facing by many uh, the policy evaluation papers. Right? So, so we we also try to uh, be very careful about this, and we try to have more evidence in the robust checks because we, we can compare the uh, more similar routines such as routines three and routine two as, uh, as a robust check. So I have a question similar uh, related to Xin Zheng's uh, point. Uh, you didn't uh, maybe explain the paper just uh, why why did this reform happen and uh, wouldn't oh, yeah, yeah. like in history, there's not only this single reform like Chen Long did many reforms together, and that's actually affected a different region and the more important region maybe developed better because of all these set of reforms, right? So uh that would uh, you know confound your 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 result because you basically it could be just the treated group performed differently because of all other reforms. Yeah. It's not deny your channel. It could be there are also better officials, but there are also many, many other things going on together. Yeah, I think so. That's I think that's a like great point by the time. Yeah. Uh, regarding this reform, the, uh, the initial they want to purpose and want to uh, improve the personnel management of the bureaucracy. many uh, senior officials and uh, the campus himself, we increasingly find that the mechanical rule based one is not, is not very, they're not satisfied with that because that generates a uh, challenge to our location. We, we thought in that mechanical one, maybe some naturally, uh, and in, in experience, the government could be a uh, function to a very challenging situation, but that's not, uh, that's not very good for the uh, local governance. So they initiated this reform. Yeah, I think uh, there are also many uh, other reform uh, underlying in the senior period. Yeah, uh, but uh, as far as I know, in the personnel management, this is the most important significant policy change during the maybe during the entire. Early and uh, middle pandemic. Yeah, so that, that I'm aware of. There are also other uh, physical reform in, as a period. Yeah, I, mean, I think we can try to uh, control uh, other uh, policy in that period to see whether our funding is uh, being there. Yeah, thank you. So, so okay. So here is uh, the result on the uh, government quality. Uh, the first thing that we find that uh, after reform in the, the treaty prefecture, uh, we have a, a, a more experienced government. And they, they also have a more competent government who have a, a better 
uh, silver service uh, is very great. So, and uh, this uh, uh, effect is uh, very substantial. The, the, this will translate into a very half increase in experience and a 60% increase in the competition. So, this is also the uh, event study uh, result for experience. We find that uh, before the reform, uh, there's uh, uh, no uh, obvious uh, pre chance and also for the competition. So, we also uh, conduct a battery of robustness check. The excluding the acting governors who may not follow, uh, the, follow the rule. And we are following the other uh, governor who has a uh, short tenure. And we, we also can explore the formation capacity. We compare the pay factor around the cover, around the cutoff, uh, which were uh, rated two and three. I think maybe this made it uh, more comparable. And also adding a pay factor performance year to that. And, uh, and a continuous measure of experience, all these uh, exercises we have a very robust effect. Yeah, so I think that so far so, we uh, have... I have one more question yeah. here. Yeah. Uh, did you check whether whether the, the governors uh, will, uh, have more political connection after the policy change? Because it yeah. seems like, it seems to me like the 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 selection process is more fair right before the policy change after the policy change because the promotion depends on depends on the discretion by the emperor right, as you said so i was wondering whether those people who have more political connection are more likely to be selected yeah 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 that's that's exactly exactly what uh, one of the mechanisms we have already oh, okay with. okay okay yeah yeah i will talk about this so. So the one, if you one thing we want to emphasize that, so the prefecture governor, you can see this is similar to the uh, prefecture mayor today. They are not very high-ranking governors in the in the bureaucracy system. So uh, I think I think most of them do not have any access to the emperor directly. Yeah, but for the provincial uh, governor. Provincial government, their function would more depending on their connection with the emperor himself. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, but we'll also check uh, check that on uh, instruction on mechanism. So we have so far we have been uh, established that uh, the discretionary appointment uh, actually improves the government's quality. So we then we then want to ask whether this improvement quality to translate into uh, any uh, dominance performance. So in this section, we are focused on the analysis on the disaster relief as a key outcome. The reason is that as the transition China was uh, you know a largely agricultural process. So the frequent uh, crop failure induced by the natural disaster will threaten people's life. And also catalyze the complex, as it's, it's documented by the uh, Professor Jiang's paper. So, essential, so the disaster relief, that would be very essential for maintaining social stability in the transition of China. So, uh, sufficient and timely response to natural disasters is a very crucial for the local governments. And uh, we the governors also have a play an important role in, in that process. We have a declared duty in serving an important disaster, assessing the farmers' losses and the implementing relief programs. And they, we also have to uh, need to cooperate with local elites to mobilize the extra resource. So the the the, the, the local government may play an important role. In it. So we also uh, specify a uh, a similar different different setting in a prefecture in the panel. So in the uh, the panel A, we, we find that we use the continuous measure, number of the, the programs or uh, dummy variable for the presenter. We we all find that uh, after the reform, the treaty prefecture we have we provide more uh, relief programs. We provide more than that to relief. And the more important thing to think about that uh, the government's uh, responsibility, right? 
So we inter we have a triple interaction with the uh, occurrence of the natural disasters, and we find that the, the, the after reform, the the the, gov the governor they provide more disaster relief when there is actually a natural disaster. So when there's no disaster, they do not have, have more uh, disaster relief. Uh, so that indicating that uh, they have a greater uh, government resources. So we, we can also we also specify the event study technique for that. So this is for the uh, the provision of uh, relief. We find that the uh, before the reform, uh, the two groups they are largely similar, and after the reform, the three different sector have more disaster relief provision. Yeah, and this also as a event study for the triple different technique. Yeah, we find that. The, the blue one is the uh, triple uh, interaction with uh, different uh, different uh, time period elements, and we also have a report uh, like this. Okay, so so let me talk about uh, we have uh, let me talk about the discussion on mechanisms. So so we have already established that uh, the the reform improved the quality of government. And we think that could be a very important channel for the improvement of their performance. So that could be also other alternative methods. So we think of we, we think of three alternative methods. The first one is the preferential policy from the upper level. You know that the think the, the treaty detector they are more important. We have high importance reasons. So it's naturally to think that whether the upper level government they place more emphasis and we prioritize this uh, treaty prefecture in, in the disaster relief or in other have some kind of uh, resource distribution, right? So the first thing we want to say that th this uh, importance rating, uh, that policy is uh, uh, restricted in the personnel management. Yeah, while they, they, they assess this rating, uh, just for the reform to implement. So, so we are not aware of, of any uh, uh, specific policy in disaster relief, which is related to the economy. So we also uh, try uh, several tasks to assess whether this kind of uh, upper government uh, preferential policy is uh, at play. So we have uh, three pieces of evidence that suggest that we think not. The first is that we show that the treaty prefecture we did not receive more attention from a senior official than the emperor. So we use the we, we use the text data from the uh, the, the regular report of the Zhuge, which is which is communicated from the uh, senior local officials, provincial provincial government with the emperors, and we can calculate as the frequency of uh, Prefecture's name mentioned in this adjustment. So I think we, that can could reflect some general attention of this uh, senior official. And we find that as a treaty prefecture, we do not have a more attention index we, we, uh, we calculate from the tax data. And another thing is that we know that we have an uh, important reason and a two books. So if uh, the if the government actually use that important reason in conducting disaster relief, we can think of in the within the treaty prefecture, which which has a reaching three or four, we think we think if the preferential policy is at play, we, we expect that this has a higher importance reaching four would also express more disaster relief compared to uh, the prefecture reaching three. But we, but we find that this is not the case. And we also find that within the control group, people have a relatively higher rating. We do not show any differences in uh, compared to the feedback of the lower region. So that's the evidence suggests that the that not report problem that is not closely correlated with the importance. And another one as we uh, 
conduct a heterogeneous analysis, we found that if the uh, upper governance with the distribution is important, we we would like to expect that in in province with the uh, rich physical resources for a distribution between different three factors, we would expect a, a greater effect. But we fail to find the such kind of heterogeneous. So that's uh, uh, the first first one. The second one, is, yeah, the, as I should just mention, whether, whether this gamma have better connection. So that we, we, we have better connection than the Zika lobby for more uh, resource distribution. Right? If we have a better connection with someone in the central government, we have a transvantage of it, so we can conduct a more uh, disaster review. And we, uh, we conducted two tests for that. The first thing is that we have directly test whether this government has a better connection. We uh, we we uh, we uh, measure that using the uh, hometown pie between this local government and the top central officials in the uh, in the city ministry. Right. So we find that uh, these uh, prefectures, uh, these prefecture governors, we do not have. Uh, we do not have a more connection with the central government. And the second thing is that uh, we, we, we have another measure of uh, uh, government's efforts. We can do, we, we, we show that the treated government, they also actually perform better in serving and reporting disasters. So that is not correlated, that is, has nothing to do with uh, resource distribution. So, and so, uh, we measure that by the tax exemption. So the in China case uh, regulation, if someone uh, occurred a natural disaster, local officials first serve the, the disaster and report the disaster to the central government. And the central government normally they will they will have a big granted tax exemption for these uh, treated for these affected regions. So the, so that is a, a largely a mortality rate. Naturally, all, all the uh, region with disaster would have this. So that we think that could uh, reflect in the government's effort in serving and report. And we also find that we come that they actually perform better at that. The issue has nothing to do with the resource distribution. So that pattern uh, are unlikely to be the reason of. Uh, Connection to this uh, use of this situation. So, just to clarify, isn't that under the discretion rule they are recommended by someone? If they don't have a connection, who would recommend them? You mean in the uh, the appointment method, the appointment process? In the discretion okay. rule, isn't yeah. that they should be recommended by someone? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. People pick uh, people, pick people, you know, all these people don't know who is good. Wouldn't they naturally need to be recommended by someone? And which means they should, uh, by definition, have some connection. Or I would be surprised that they have no, no, how could uh, people have information on who is a good guy? Yeah, yeah, I think that's a great point. Uh, my understanding is that, yes, if Someone we want to be promoted from county officials to prefect office. Actually, they, they, they absolutely need promotion from the superior uh, deliver. So if they get the promotion, the promotion is uh, separate from the, the appointment process. So you can think of uh, there are um, four vacancies and there are four people who get the promotion and are about to be appointed as the uh, Officials, they are on the candidate list. Whether they are appointed to a more certain certain position, that is uh, determined by the district decision. So that means that in the candidate for the enter phase, all this they are already have the qualification of promotion. I think I'm, this is a little bit complicated uh, exercise. Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah, and uh, 
the last one. Uh, maybe this, uh, maybe this uh, high important rating will increase the promotion likelihood of this uh, this certain position. All this uh, rating and make the performance of a tree dominant more salient. Thus, could also incentivize uh, greater effort. We uh, we also uh, try to assess whether this is uh, healthy, and we uh, we do uh, we do the a switch governor who is uh, whose tenure across the reform tenure. Actually, the uh, you know appointment just before the reform takes place when there is no important meeting, but uh, the their tenure ended after the reform. So we call them a switch sample, switch governor. So if that is the case, so after the reform, this position, they uh, naturally have a higher promotion likelihood. We would expect that for this governor appointment before the reform, we, we also have more incentive after the reform. So we can check that whether they are promoted, um, whether they have a, a greater promotion likelihood and whether after the reform time, they perform, actually perform better. And we, oh, sorry, not, not that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So the first, we can uh, ask, we can uh, assess whether we have a higher promotion likelihood. And we found that this is not the case. So for this uh, governor appointed to the high rating position compared to the low rating position before the reform. So, so they are post the reform promotion likelihood, they are largely similar. And the second thing that we also use this switch sample in prefecture year panel, and we found that we actually did not have a significant uh, 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 better performance in, in, in the uh, response in this example. So we, so we uh, think that it seems to be unlikely that the Incentive expansion is that. Yeah. yeah. And uh, another thing that we, uh, someone may concern that we have a longer whether we have longer tenure, so we, so we have a, uh, we, we have, so we have uh, a longer time horizon, so we just could lead to better form. But we find that that's actually that reform doesn't change the, the, the time. Time loss of this boundary. Uh, okay, so uh, that's the uh, uh, maximum destruction part, and we uh, try to uh, try to bring down that whether the, the improvement quality is a uh, major major reason, and we try to assess the level of quality likelihood. It was that case. Yeah. So. And we also have uh, some uh, complement results on first of all, but due to the data limitation, the data quality, we, uh, our interpretation about that is more uh, is more subjective. So, so we also uh, use the uh, occurrence of our rights uh, as well. outcome. We find that uh, after reform, we have the treaty prefecture, the actually experience less performance. And uh, an interesting thing we really find that uh, that the fact is mainly driven driven by the social arrest against the government. For the for, for this uh, social arrest, there's a conflict between different social groups, we don't have a, a we don't find a significant. Okay, so I have a uh, 10 more minutes. So in the last moment I was Talk about the uh, the last part. So when the discretion is beneficial in the that we we have understanding that uh, discretion is really not a good thing, right? This open door to corruption. That's the uh, basic understanding of it. So our finding is a little bit more uh, counterintuitive. So we find that we uh, argue that that's an late they have a cost and benefit of discretion as I said in the introduction. On the one hand, they enable the use of information, and, uh, and on the other hand, they open doors of the So we uh, 
we borrow some insight from the organizational theory, and we try to argue that the dramatic effect of the user question actually depends on the incentive alignment between the decision maker and the organization. So, uh, so the empirical prediction that when the decision makers alignment is high, we will find more a great, more positive effect. When the alignment is low, the, the, the decision maker more likely to use the, use the discretion for his uh, own benefit. We would like to, uh, we would expect a more freely to do that. Right. So uh, we will uh, shed some light on this using the continuity of uh, these uh, pointers. As I said, the, the, after reform, the most of the city prefecture who were appointing at the discretion of the emperor. But uh, there are also a relative uh, small number of positions. We are appointing on the, the provincial list ladder, provincial government's discretion. So, so what's the difference? Different between the emperor and the original. So in the Qing dynasty, we know that the Qing's emperor they are very intelligent and they are very highly educated, and they have a large stake in the overall performance of the bureaucracy. So we think uh, the emperor would have a high discretion alignment compared with the provincial leaders, and the provincial leaders they, they are rotated frequently. They, they, they tend to have more short-term incentives and more private gains in the free thing like after. So we can break down the uh, treated, treated groups into two groups and uh, to, uh, to, to estimate the effect of the talent allocator and the uh, performance separately. So here, here is the result on the talent allocation. We find that the, the the increase in quality we showed before is the mainly driven by the position, which is on the discretion of the emperor. So for the provincial leaders, they actually do not use their discretion to select a more experienced and uh, competent uh, government. And we also show us also find the same result on the on their performance. We find that the effect on the government's office is also mainly driven by prefecture on the emperor's discretion. And we also try to uh, uh, provide some uh, evidence on ability, uh, but to, also due to data limitation, we our uh, implication is more like uh, scarcity. The first thing we want, we can uh, estimate the ethnic type. So if, uh, the, if the emperor himself also has some kind of ability, we want to appoint more people who share the ethnic. Yeah, the emperor is a Manchuri. They want to appoint more Manchuri people for his some kind of personal gain. But we find that actually the emperor does not appoint a more a Manchuri stuff. But for the provincial leaders, the provincial leaders that uh, uh, two kinds, one is the Han provincial leader and the Manchuri provincial leader. We find that the on average provincial leaders are more likely to appoint uh governor who shares the ethnic type. And we also find that that event is mainly driven by the Han, Han leaders. And the last things, uh, we try to uh, try to assess uh, whether this governor is uh, whether this governor is to be more punished. And uh, we find that the interesting we find that uh, Governor appointment by the provincial leaders, they are less likely to be uh, in this section. So our understanding that uh, how to interpret this, this result. So uh, in a practice, uh, any kind of a sanction should first be proposed by the uh, provincial uh, leader. So provincial leader have a great power in the decision of uh, sanction as uh, application. So the, the less likely of sanction could be a reflect of a flex and monitor. So as I as in, in the next video, we show that provincial labor we actually on uh, more connected ones, and uh, these connected ones we see less sanction. 
Okay, so that's that's the uh, that's the main result. So the main, let me conclude in a few words. We in this program we're using a special setting of Atlas Imperial bureaucracy, and uh, we show that the discretion appointment improves the uh, quality and the performance guarantees. So the maybe the, the implication that the reverent tradition on the idea of bureaucracy not possible. In a very a rigid institutional environment, increasing the depression could can be um, could be uh, beneficious. For the we uh, that that implication should be integrated with cultures that plan. So in different settings, maybe the, the decision makers have a different managing style. So granted them this equation may not be beneficial. So that that's determined on the specific uh, environment. So another implication is that this question does not necessarily lead to a uh, whole performance or uh, so it matters who use the discretion. Yeah, thank you. That's all my presentation today. Okay, thank you. I, I, I have a I have one more question, maybe uh I, I'm thinking about uh, uh, the general implication of your results because uh, you said that well the discretionary appointment is beneficial right? and it also depends on who use the discretion so i was wondering for example in, in a current world are there any countries who who do not use this uh, discretionary appointment process or are there still any country who use the lottery to select their officials yeah 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 i, I understand so, so the benchmark we do this setting is that uh, some kind of special, but we uh, drawing on the uh, uh, history. There are there are also many exercises using the lottery for that. For example, in the uh, in the uh, city space in the European history, they actually use the lottery in selecting the city government and uh, the council members. And and the, and we, in our reading, uh, in many uh, lower level. Lower level appointment of bureaucrats around the world. There are also some kind of randomness in uh, in practice. Yeah, for 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 the senior one, I think in the most of the world, for the senior officials, we, we do not we do normally do not uh, use a very a rigid rule in the country. So we still have three minutes. Any other questions? Um, excuse me, may I ask a question? Yeah. Uh -huh, yeah. So, uh, so first, Kevin, uh, congratulations. This is really a very a nice frame. I really like the frame, which is definitely important. And I have two. One so like comments. The other is a question. First is about the frame. Because you mentioned one key contribution here is that we lack within organization variation. And this reminds me of the German market paper of Bo Xi, which you definitely cite that if I remember correctly, in his exercise, there's also within that British empire, there is a shift in the discretionary to the removal of discretionary uh, system, right? So of course you are focused on very di distinct questions. So uh, so this is more like a comment, you just perhaps better, a bit refinements on how to reconcile with that. But these are distinct questions. And the fact that uh, also speaks to the, the Xinjiang's uh, point that to what extent that you result can be generalized because here the benchmark is a very rigid allocation rule. It's seniority based. And then it switched to a discretionary, which we can also frame this as a more flexible system. So one potential thought experiment is that what if there's, it, it does not, it did not shift to a discretional appointment system, as you mentioned in this paper, but just like a, say, a naive way, like a, an additional round of screening or ability or something, it's just anything more flexible, then it would be an mm -hmm. improvement, mm -hmm. right? I, I could be wrong, but, uh, and in this sense, it's more like it just from a rigid 
uh, assignment system to a more flexible one. So as you mentioned in your last slides, that's the general takeaway. And finally, a, a minor question is that, perhaps, perhaps because I missed something, is at your page 29, you say there's no additional attention from the MPRO, right? But your last set of slides suggests that it is that those who are directly assigned or discretionary assignment by the MPRO, they have better performance, which seems a bit uh, hard to reconcile. Yeah, perhaps I just missed something. Yeah, so so sorry for, for taking so long of time. And uh, anyways, it's a really a very nice paper. Thank you. Yeah, so thank you for your comments. I think uh, for the last questions, yeah, uh, our uh, the attention measure is more like very general attention. We just calculate whether a prefecture is the frequency of the yeah, matching in all these people that could reflect all kinds all kinds of methods, but it doesn't really to uh, not uh, just uh, restricted to some uh, public goods uh, public goods provision. Uh, so uh, I think that capture we want to capture the more general uh, patterns. Yeah, and for your last comments, uh, for your first comment, that she was a uh, paper on the British. Uh, colonized UI. There's yeah, we 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 know that there's a shift from the the point of view the discretion system to a uh, uh, fever service uh, fever service uh, appointment process. So that uh, that uh, policy change do not have a uh, facial variation. So after that reform, all these uh, colonial uh, government have to be appointed by the fever fever service exam, right? So that's that's not a very good uh, identification setting because we don't have a counterfactual at the same time. Yes, I think that's a, a main performance for application in our field. Yeah. yeah, thank you for the comment.